Right, it's all back reassembled. Managed to get a nice little grommet back in there. Cable runs around down, down into the carburetor. There's no little gasket on there yet. I've taken the rubber gasket off there because you can't put rubber in the parts cleaner. Right, so give me a light in there when you open the throttle. You can't see it that way around. So I go there, that's better. There's the slider. Open the throttle. Lift it up. The needle's not in there for a very good reason because I don't want to dent it or bang it or bend it or anything. Well, there you go, there's a throttle movement. Now, I'm not overly happy because it doesn't return back using the spring pressure in there, although it's a very strong spring. And I've got a horrible feeling there was a slight kink on the cable where it had been used to being in one position. Now I've put that nipple in that slider around the first way that it was. I think I've got to take this all apart again, turn that cable, the inner core, 180 degrees, so it whizzes round, so there's no resistance, because there's a bit of grindiness about there. And that shouldn't be, that should spring return but it doesn't. It's not far away, but I can feel that graunching. So I reckon if I just do that thing, take it all apart. I know it's a pain in the ass, but it's my own fault because I didn't look where that kink was on that cable before I put the nipple in there. So it's probably itching to twist around 180 degrees. When I do that, I'm sure that will spring return. All right, well, uh, there we go. That's a lot different, isn't it, from what it was. I'm pleased with that. Just got to do a bit more tinkering and I will give this a scrub up with the brass brass brush in the cleaner just to give it a little bit of a sheen because that's about enough, isn't it? Okay, well that's about it for, for now. Um, right, what's after that? Better get the engine gasket kit out and I start on the engine. I think I'm going to do that. Okay, not today though. I've got to take the dog for a walk. Right, thanks for watching. Right, well after a few minutes of scrubbing... I think you'd agree, that's an awful lot better, isn't it? Look at that. So yes, I will spend a good day on the carburetor. It's going to be worth it at the end of the day, isn't it? I'm not going concourse, but it's nice to have it all clean inside. Yeah, I've just got to pop that nipple uh, back, in, back into there, like so. And then I can put the cable, just put the, the sock back on there. Look, I've got to pop that cable through that hole there which then comes out through that hole there. You put the spring on underneath. Well, see that little recess there? The spring goes in there. And then you poke the cable down through and you pop it so it slides down the outside of there and then pops in that little recess in there. I'll show you in a sec. Right, okay, let's, uh, let's carry on. I'm almost there. Right, I've got the carb apart. I've got all the bits up in there. Let's give this a bit of wire brush treatment. It's not, I mean, it's, it's clean enough, isn't it? But, you know, I like it to be a little bit cleaner than that. Let's see what we can do with that little brush. I'm not expecting miracles, but at the end of the day, it would be nice, wouldn't it? Right, let's, uh, let's give it a bit of a scrub-a-dub-dub. Well, that's not, um, it's not too bad, is it? Even that bit's come up a little bit. I'll probably end up painting that black. Just to contrast. The carb. It's been a whole lot better, isn't it? Even that little screw head, look. I had to bring out, I had to bring out Daddy bronze brush. That one sort of died a bit, and that could get into the, into the nooks and crannies, so that's good. Yeah, that's looking good now, isn't it? That's um, quite respectable. That can go back on. It's coming out all right, isn't it? Quick brush up. Well, I say quick. I'm sweating me flipping jugs off again here for an hour. Right. There's the choke mechanism all out. Just need to go back in now. Give that a good dry clean up. Make sure everything uh, everything um, goes back together properly. Um, I've installed the new rear brake. Uh, front brake, well, yeah, brake light switch, if you like, that's the front brake, isn't it? So, when you 
that's uh, circuit um, closed, circuit open, pull the brake, light comes on, brake shuts, light goes off, that's done, that's all there, uh, all in, yeah, it's not looking too bad is it, really, I'm quite pleased with that to be fair, I think this is freed up a bit, I think I've actually put too much grease in it, because it's um, just normal engineering grease, it's not like thin lithium grease or uh, any specialist grease and when I took it off there was virtually none in there I think that was probably telling me something don't you so it's actually it's free moving but it's that's still not going to spring back on its own so I'm going to take this apart again a bit later but uh, can't bread tonight tonight so let's get this finished right Mr E.D. get your finger out and get on Well, here we go, this is how the carb finished up. That's a lot cleaner, isn't it? That's out the parts cleaner here. And the brass brush. That is so much cleaner, isn't it? He went through the uh, ultrasonic cleaner to start with. I've put a lock nut on there just to tidy that up because I had like a little tiny little lock tab that you bent over and the nut was all skanky and knackered so that's nice and touch sensitive that's pretty good so yeah it's all good isn't it that just wraps up the the carburetor situation right okay uh, let me carry on Right, the exhaust bracketry and main spring have been cooking for about, I don't know, three hours. And my uh, specifically made um, Dale Boy broom there. <laughs> right, let's uh, unplug the power. Right, turn it off there, just in case. Remove said broom and lift. So what's going on? Well, it's all very black. I reckon a good wire brush up, and we'll see what goes on with that. Right, two seconds. Right, well, we saw those brackets when they went into the um, electrolysis uh, wheelie bin. Uh, <clears throat> here they are. Um, let's put a little bit of light on. Is that better? No, I think so. The only thing is, it's, it's not bad at all, that one. The other one's a little bit on the on the grotty side. It's still got that thick, crusty... I'm sure that will chip off with the screwdriver. But generally, generally, yee-haw. I mean, that's got some life back in it now. It's not brilliant. But then again, that was literally just dangling off of there. So the electric contact, if there was rust between there and there... That wouldn't have been getting a proper zap, would it? So perhaps I might try it again. See, that's not bad, is it? It's actually a lot better than what it was. And it sort of looks like um, what it should be now. So generally, overall, does it work? Is it conclusive? Well, yes, I think it is. Um, if I had better contacts, I mean, I literally just wrapped... And copper cable just twisted it around these holes and dangled it in. If I'd have actually bolted it to them, I'm sure we've had a, a slightly better result. But there we go. Uh, to be continued, I think these are work in project, in progress even. I, I have a huge box of springs. I can't put my hands on it straight away, but I'm sure I've got something. I might even reuse this one, but uh, if it is too dodgy, 
I will pick one out of my box. So there we are. That's pretty much it. Um, yeah, that's enough rubbing and scrubbing. Oh, I've been busy as well. This is the piece which goes the chain. If you can imagine, the chain circumnavigates that. And these two, two 10 mil bolts there, hold the top and the bottom mug guard on. Here is the top one. Um, it's, yeah, that's that sort of bolts onto there kind of thing. I've had it in the parts cleaner with the wire brush. And look at that, it's not too bad at all inside, is it? Because it hasn't done any miles, it was just greased up. So anyway, that's the top piece, that's the one that people have. The bottom piece is the one that's like rocking horse shoe, shoe shoe to get. Oh God. It's here. My one is not too bad. There is a huge patch of rot at the front there. Now I don't know what I can do with it. Whether I can get some tin, some steel, and just, I don't know, tack it or rivet it or something onto there. The bolt hole's still there, so that's not so bad. Again, inside, look, it's not bad at all, is it? So that's the bottom part. Oh, dog, shut up, for goodness sake. So there we go, it's not brilliant, is it? But it's something I can work with. So there we go, I've been flipping extra dude busy, I tell you. And that's enough for one day, I'm absolutely covered in goo goo. Um, time for a cuppa, I think, don't you? Right, to be continued. Here we are in the shed again. I've got lots of things going on today. I have pretty much given up on that, uh, but that's another story. I might try some lead work to fill that pinhole. There's a pinhole in there. Forks, uh, I've prepped these, nicely sprayed. There we go, nicely sprayed up there with some uh, some nice silver. Need to give it another coat and then uh, another coat of lacquer. Um, what I've been doing, what have I been doing? Oh, what's this in front of my face? <laughs> That's the back rack. As you can see, it's come a long way since how it started out. Um, these flanges, exhaust flanges, have been soaking in the bottom of this for about a week. And it's not really done anything to it. The other one in there is absolutely gammed up with that gluey substance. So I think we can safely say that the chrome's lifted off of there, isn't it? But I'm going to pop that back in it. That was clear, by the way, just now. And that is... Uh, thin as... Just emptied it into there. And it's an airtight container, so it doesn't evaporate. Uh, that was crystal clear just now. I popped that first one of these in, and it went that colour. So let's pop the other one in there. Let that just soak away. Here is the original um, fuel petcock. Um, I've removed the seal. The seal is up in there doing that. There's a few bits and pieces in there. That little valve there, a little disc, was completely blocked with that stuff that was inside the fuel tank. That black, treacly, varnishy stuff. Anyway, if you can see down that pipe, that's blocked. That hole's blocked. You can see the holes are blocked. One hole's free, that one there, which is that hole there. That one is free, as you can see. Bottom, top left-hand corner is in line with there. That, that works, but the rest is blocked. So it's going into the mixture of doom. Let me just submerge that completely. Okay, lid goes on. That's going to build up a little bit of pressure, obviously, because there's vapours. So I'm going to just leave that. I've uh, given it a bit of a swirl. Let's see if that thinners can get rid of that gooey, sticky crap off it. I'm absolutely disgusted with that stuff. Look, it's popped the lid off already. You see that? Okay, pressure out. You come. It's forcing. Look at that. that is, pressure's forcing that lid up. So I'll just leave that to settle. Perhaps I should take it out of the shed where it's quite warm in here. It's going to get hotter today. Okay, um... I need to really get that frame out, get it on the um, on the flappy wheel, get that sanded down. I have lots and lots of paint and various gubbins up there to spray it with. Um, what else have I been doing? Tank's fine. That's the tank I'm going to use. I've been sanding off this rear mud guard. It's um, it's it's good, but it's not great. <laughs> it, uh, it's going to need hours and hours of work. I mean, I've literally 
Which side did I do? That bit there, look. It's just literally taking me hours. I know my flappy wheel has seen better days and it's a bit tired. But there we go. I found some bracketry that was in there. Two of the brackets. What did two of the brackets do? They were the exhaust brackets which go on the mufflers and bolt onto the frame. Those brackets and the main stand uh, moon shaped bracket with the spring. That is happily bubbling away. Hello dog. In there. Just sort of give it a once over with the old electrolysis. And, and see what happens. You never know, do you? So, right, let's get back in this shed of plenty. I have so much to do. I, I've been, to be honest, since my Welsh trip, I've not even been in the shed really. Uh, I've been mucking around with the wheel, wheelie bin outside, doing, the, trying to electrolysize the the fuel tank. But I've kind of, I don't know, I've been very lethargic. Now, whether that's down to my uh, being diagnosed with diabetes or what, I don't know, but I've just been feeling so down, not down, but tired all the time. I come out the back door, I walk down to the shed, and I think, oh, I can't be bothered, I can go back and lay down. I've been sleeping, laying down and sleeping. That's not me. Right, okay, so, um, plenty more to do. I've got stuff to go in the ultrasonic cleaner, I've got things to spray and paint. Uh, what I'm doing now is as I do something, it goes upstairs in a bag or whatever, gets put away upstairs. There's a lot of stuff upstairs now. Um, it's just working through it really. Then once I've done the frame, I'm going to spend a good couple of days on the engine. I'm taking the head off, taking the pistons off, or observing the pistons, having a good look, see if the rings are okay or stuck. Uh, I'm going to clean the uh, internal oil filter out. Put the, I've got a new gasket set. There's my new gasket set all ready to go, so that's all good. Um, yeah, it's sort of coming into play now. I've got that thing, I've got the bit back in me in my mouth now. I'm really chomping at the bit to crack on. Uh, I think the worst thing is the heat for me. It's done me in. I've come down to the shed of an evening thinking, right, okay, I'm going to open the door. Oven. Oh, it's just wiped me out. It's wiped me out completely. Anyway, enough of that negativity. Uh, I've got lots to do. Uh, I think I might have a go this afternoon painting these little babies by hand I just want to get my Dremel out and just go through the through the holes there just to clean them out so, uh, so they paint the deers properly ok my dears, right thank you for looking and uh, right, catch you soon Right, let's get those hubs painted. Got some hammerite, I think it's the best paint for the job. Simple couple of axle stands, old drill bit, wheel, uh, hub. Right, let's give it a. That's pretty darn good, isn't it? And easy as well. Okay, it's starting to run there a little bit, so I'll keep I'll keep spinning. I went on a bit heavy, but I'm trying to film it as I do it, so I shouldn't really be doing that, should I? Anyway, there we go, so I so I'll do my hubs. Howdy doody! Alright, just to bring everybody up to speed, uh, we know about the new frame and the new identity of the bike. It's now a 1975 bike. It's red. Um, it's always been red, but I want to turn it blue because I prefer blue and chrome to, to the red and chrome. It's, it's a blue's a boy's colour. Um, it's my keeper bike, so it's going blue unfortunately. Sorry everybody, but the donor tank is blue already uh, it's going to need another coat of proper paint isn't it but there we go so i am just uh wet and drying down 
the headlamps around as you can see where it's been stood in the sun this side's all faded so it's going to be nice shiny blue which is good I've got the frame to paint that's coming on engine is still been sat there I've got the gaskets up there as you know I've got to paint the mug at the chain guard so there's a, a bit of metal work needs going on there I've not done any metal work yet um, got an arc welder but I don't want to be blowing holes in anything I was thinking about getting one of those little flux welder things um, from Lidl's but I think that would still blow a hole in that stuff that's that thin. Anyway, so what have I been up to today? Well, I've prepped those four pieces. Uh, one of them is a donor one, and that was blue already. I've just got these out of the loft. They're going to be going in the parts cleaner in a minute, wet and dry, wet and dry. Get that prepped up. Uh, oh, I know you can't see a lot about this, but in here is the front and rear hubs, exhaust flanges are there. They're all painted up and they look nice. So the forks they've painted, they've just gone upstairs, so that's that. Oh uh, yeah, just basically bringing it up to speed. There's the rear mug guard, taking it back to metal in some places, a bit scabby. Again, if I wanted it pristine, I'd have to, pardon me, do lots of metal work on it of which I could probably do, but I've never really done that kind of thing before. I'd love to get into that, you know, uh, fabricate your own stuff. I've got the two mug guards down there. I might even use just the one that I, that I got because it means cutting the two of them and, and joining them together somehow. Ugh. I don't want a perfect, this is gonna be a bit of an oily rag bike, so there we go, I don't know. I really don't know. I might even have just sleep in my guards with the holes in. It's still my guard, isn't it, at the end of the day? Uh, right, that's about it. I think it's brought up to speed pretty much. I've been doing lots of other things, actually. Um, I've not been sat on my butt doing nothing. That's not all I've done. I've had a, a friend's house has been, been um, restored, basically. Yes, I do house restorations as well. And I've taken all of the, the door fixings off, the, the old-fashioned the old fashioned steel big metal brassy handles with a little slidey brass bolt well I have taken four three of those out of the house and I have stripped them all back to, to, to bare metal uh, and uh, I've painted them and they're all back together all bags up ready to go so I've been doing that actually when I should have been doing this but there we go uh, I could uh, I do get sidetracked that's why things take a little bit more time than I thought normally I do uh, a restoration in eight or nine weeks this one's taken god knows how long so far isn't it a lot longer than that um right that's it wrapping it up uh catch you in the next little bit see you in a minute Right, well now you can see this is the rear mud guard uh, out in the day, it's been in the parts cleaner and you can quite clearly see, <laughs> uh, yeah we've got some pinholes going on there and there and you can bet your life when I remove that scab there, there's going to be more pinholes there. So what I'm going to do, something I, again I've never done before, so this is a nice learning curve. I'm going to get myself some lead sticks and I'm going to lead those holes up. Now I'm going to apply high coat underbody spray. That stuff, trust me, is absolutely brilliant. Um, once that's on, it's on. It's never coming off. Wherever you spray it, it stays. It's nasty stuff in a good way. So that's good. Um, right, I've got a little bit more prepping to do that. I'm actually going to put some high coat on now away from the holes because they're just on the on literally on the rim of the mug guard and uh, once that's done uh, yeah we can start sort of thinking about giving it some blue paint can't we right okay take it easy well, there we go giving that a nice dousing of that stuff pretty flipping good it's uh, don't like advertising but it is good stuff look at that good finish on that absolutely good finish there's no way that is going to rust in the future so that's all good. I've got to, like I say, I'm going to lead up some of these holes. There's one there, a 
three or four there actually, literally just three or four, uh, a piece there. I did pick that scab off and that's the result of that. And we've got two holes that side. That's it. That is it. So I'm happy. And once they're done, I can file that and sand that flat and get some, uh, get some primer on it, undercoat, and uh, stick the blue on. Right, I'm just going to give these four little babies one more coat of the grey primer. And then um, I'm going to wrap it up for the day. That's plenty enough to be getting on with, isn't it? Right, guys and girls, thank you for watching again. Like, subscribe, comment, leave me a tip if you like, or ask me a question if you want to know something that I probably don't know the answer to. And uh, we'll see what we can do. Anyway, thanks for looking, really appreciate it. Right, see you later.